uh, our needs are less. And if we eat the right types of food, yes, we can produce enough glutathione to meet our needs. Uh, but then, even in California, guess what? We have access to alcohol. We have access to other uh, other uh, other food sources that that our body has to detoxify on a daily basis. We eat fish, which has high levels of mercury in there, and so on and so forth. So, regardless on where we live, we still have our vices that we can get out of it, and hence our need is is more than our body can produce. But 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 you are right. If you if you have if you fall if we if we can all follow your instruction on how to eat properly, Maria, I think we we will have enough glutathione in our body for us. Have you ever wondered is rinsing my produce with the water that comes out of the sink that I don't even drink enough to really clean it? Well, then you're one of the smartest people I know because you're absolutely right. It's not enough. That's why we created the only all natural and patented line of food wash and wipes. And it's called Eat Cleaner. It's tasteless, odorless, and lab tested. And it removes up to 99.9% of the residue that water can't, including pesticides, wax, soil, and junk that can carry bacteria that can really make you sick. Plus, we formulated it to help extend the shelf life of your fresh produce too. And that'll save you money. When your berries are lasting up to 10, 12 days, you know that's a good thing. It helps your produce last up to five times longer using a natural blend of fruit acids and antioxidants. So there's no chemicals. It's just clean eating fun. And this can help save your family an average of over $500 per year. Make it easy on yourself, reduce waste, and get that fruit and veggies into your body where it's going to do you a lot of good and not in the trash. Check us out, eatcleaner.com or head to our Amazon store at amazon.com forward slash eatcleaner. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it certainly gets us a good length of the way. And there's so many other reasons why you want to eat better. Um, but I think, you know, let's face it, we don't live in a bubble. And the, the what we expose ourselves to, I mean, no matter what we do, we don't want to get to the point of paranoia. But I, I've always been a big fan of supplementation. I mean, you know, even if you're eating produce that, um, you know, you're eating a wide variety of produce, if you're buying it from the store, chances are it's already lost about 60% of its vitamin C content just by the sheer fact that it takes days to get from wherever it's been picked to our store. So a lot of our food is actually fairly depleted, not to mention the condition of the soil, et cetera. So when we're talking about glutathione, your Mm -hmm product in your book, which I want to just give a great shout out to because I'm really enjoying reading it. Um, And I want to talk a little bit more about that. But in your research, you have found that the way you actually take glutathione makes a huge impact too, correct? Yes, it does. Keep in mind, glutathione is a protein. Again, uh, proteins are very hard to get inside your body. Because if Why you take, is that? Well, well, the thing is, glutathione, if you take a capsule forms or any other form of glutathione that is taken orally, the body will sense this as a protein. And what it does to the proteins, it will cleave into different amino acids. Just because you ate glutathione uh, uh, in the form of a capsule form and it breaks down in your body, not necessarily is going to produce glutathione again. But the good thing is it has, a, it has a three amino acids that is required to produce a glutathione and the body has to remake again. It's the same way as if I want to build um, a tree house in my backyard, I buy a tree house, come to my front porch, I, I, I dismantle the whole tree house again, take all the parts back in the backyard and rebuild again. Wouldn't it be easier just to take, uh, just buy the parts to begin with and just take it to the backyard and put it in, uh, in the tree house. Or better yet, our product, the way we have designed the product, we get the tree house right into your backyard from the get-go. 
<laughs> so. I love that. I love that analogy. Um, and, you know, the, the truth is, too, everybody's gut um, and the condition of their, you know, metabolism and breaking food down can vary. So um, if you've got a clean working system, when you eat food, your ability to absorb certain nutrients may be much better than someone else who has a lot of buildup, a lot of toxicity in their body, correct? Absolutely. And you just hit, you just hit the nail on uh, the hammer on the nail, so to speak. Um, the leaky gut syndrome is what I deal with it on a daily basis with my pharmaceutical side. So on my other, I have, I have two halves of my body. One half, I'm still a pharmacist at trade. So I still fill prescriptions and talk to customers on a daily basis. And I see record number of patients that are coming to us with the leaky gut problem where the foods they're eating, they're not di- digesting. They're taking too much medications that, to, to regain the control of your body. And I'm having too many issues to deal with it. And we don't know how the time where to begin. Hmm. So it, it is, it is and, and that and and that in part is due to you know antibiotics. Just think about that. It's destroying the good and the bad bacteria. So when you're talking about a balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut, um, you're kind of wiping the slate clean, so to speak, and you need to be able to. Um, then kind of recreate a, a microbiome condition that has good and bad bacteria, right? I mean, it's, it's a balance there. We want, we want a variety of different types of bacteria so that we can actually fight infection and prevent these types of scenarios like leaky gut syndrome from happening. That's right. And we we want to make sure that we all understand that this body that it was that has been given to us, we have more bacteria in our body than human cells. We don't we don't own this body at all. It's mm-hmm. belongs to bacteria. If you don't respect them, if you don't respect their if if you don't respect that the the their need for need for in our body, we're gonna have a bigger problem. And uh, you just nailed it. The antibiotics. We have more problems. With, uh, with weight gain and leaky gut issues in wintertime because people prescribe high amounts of antibiotics during wintertime. Yes. Uh, and we have more problems during winter months than summer months when everything is uh, sunshine and everything is, everybody's happy out there. They're eating the right, right, right fruits and vegetables, exercising. All those things pl- uh, 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 play a big role in our life. I have to share a story with you on this subject, not to go completely off topic, but last year was a really like monumental year for me, filled with the highest highs and the lowest lows. I lost my mom suddenly to heart failure. Um, I had my book launch. I got engaged. I ended up in the emergency room from... um, from a kidney infection and then again from a food related issue. It it just was a crazy year. But I have to say when I had that situation happen, I had first a really bad kidney infection and I didn't even know I had it until I literally was shaking and convulsing from a really high fever that had traveled to my kidney. My doctor was like, uh, did you not have any other symptoms? I was like, I guess not, because it was so bad. And then I had to have two treatments of antibiotics. And then not even a month later, I ended up back in the emergency room because I had a really severe reaction to shrimp. And I wonder, had I not been on those two courses of antibiotics prior, would I, I have had that kind of reaction to the food? And you, that's, that's another issue that we're dealing with today is when people have taken this course of antibiotics and they end, up, end, up, end up having leaky gut issues, leaky gut is nothing more than food getting trapped into the cells inside the gut lining, which your body then develops allergic reaction to it. Um, and so it could be any food, you know, it could be apples, bananas, eggs, chicken. Yeah. I mean, I, I ate with a bunch of other people that night and I had shrimp, get this, it was farm raised. 
in uh, very poor conditions. And I do believe I got some level of toxicity from the shrimp, but my reaction to it was so severe, I believe, because I had just taken these rounds of antibiotics and I was just building my system back up. So anyway, not to digress from our topic, but (laughs) Gut health is real, folks, and I talk about it a lot. I mean, we have so much bacteria in our intestines, 30 feet, (laughs) 30 feet that food has to travel in our large intestines. So just think about that. The food that you eat really does dictate how quickly your body is either going to use and absorb those nutrients or not know what to do and hold on to a lot of waste. So very, very important to get your fiber, get your good probiotics, your prebiotics, and keep everything moving quickly. I say food in, waste out as fast as possible. (laughs) Yes. But the reason I brought that up was your glutathione product, let's talk about it a little bit. It's transdermal. So you're actually spraying it onto your skin versus ingesting it. Is the reason for that because of what we just talked about, that people process and digest foods, especially protein differently, and maybe it's not absorbing as well? Yes. And the glutathione, again, it doesn't absorb through the mouth at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And so... I had to figure out, is it possible for me to get the glutathione any other route? And it took us a few years to basically figure out, glutathione is a very reactive substance. So my first goal was, can I stabilize this uh, in, in a liquid condition? Can I, can I at least do that part? So we were able to first uh, stabilize the glutathione in, in a water-based solution for the very first time about 11 years ago. Then our second goal was, okay, well, now this is stable. It smells awful and, you know, it's, it doesn't taste very good. Um, and, of course, I didn't want to go to the mouth anyways. So our next goal was, is it possible for this thing to get through the skin? And skin being a, such an impermeable membrane that protects us from environmental toxins the whole time. Nothing goes through your skin um, at, at, at any fast pace. Uh, my job was to figure out how can I get through the layers of your skin inside your body. And hence the the technology that we developed, we were able to reduce the glutathione particle size to what our skin was will allow it to get into a body. So the patents were approved last year after, after, after providing a tremendous amount of work that we did uh, to the patent officer and, uh, once they've released the patent, we were able to talk about it in more in detail. But yes, this glutathione is topical. It, it gets into your body undenatured, doesn't get broken down, and is ready for, ready for your body to use immediately. And so let's talk about what that means. I mean, it's amazing that you were able to create this method of you know, enabling the body to absorb it. But what does it really mean when you are deficient in glutathione? Maybe you can talk a little bit about what um, what the risks are of actually being deficient in it and what it, what it can do. Uh, I know that you have a couple of case studies that you shared with me, especially with your dad. I'm really curious to hear, what does it look like when you don't have enough in your system? Well, the biggest thing with uh, with the glutathione is that everybody, every human being on this planet has some level of oxidative stress. And I, I use the word oxidative because people understand what stress is, but people do not understand what, what oxidative stress is. So the first thing is that people are under stress. When you have stress, you produce a lot of free radicals. And that particular free radical is is called oxidative stress. And what that means is that your body is is inflamed. Your body is um, uh, uh, had a lot of reactive species inside. And, and your body has to somehow get rid of it. One thing that we all know about oxidative stress is, is when you go out in sun, you know, you the sunlight will will increase. Uh, the production in, under your skin, a lot of oxygen, uh, oxygen species. And we know that because your, your skin gets burned and you feel the sunburn. Mm-hmm. So immediately said, oh, my, my skin is burning. What is that burning? 
That's oxidative stress. Now you can feel that because it, it's outside and you because it's coming from the sun. How about the same exact issue that's coming from inside when you are exposed when you have 